We are back on Pack Attack, and it is time today for the first game of Pack Attack on MLB The Show 24. As you can tell, I'm very excited for this. Pack Attack is always some of the best times I have on this game every year, and it's finally time to get that started. If you didn't see the last episode, I posted kind of an episode zero, an intro episode, to explain how every aspect of the series works this year. So if you missed that, go back watch it or all the rules all the stats all the stuff you need to know will be down in the description of every video and probably the best way to understand how it all works is us to just get into it see everything done in practice and then we'll all be caught up to speed however though from that intro episode i do already have one thing i want to change one thing I want to clarify and one thing that I just straight up forgot to mention. So first of all, the thing that I want to change is going back to when I was talking about the interest rate in the stub bank. I said it was going to be 0.1% per win added to the interest rate, which basically meant every 10 wins, we'd be adding a 1% interest rate to the stub bank. And I just, after I was thinking about it, that's too little. So we're going to double that. We're going to make it a 0.2% increase to the stub bank interest rate for each win. So basically what that boils down down to is every five wins we'll be adding a one percent interest rate to our stub bank now what i wanted to clarify is when i was talking about what would be on the pack wheel i don't think i did a good enough job at explaining it but when it comes to the packs in the shop like the special packs these awards drops the pipeline pack each set of headliners all that sort of stuff it's only going to be the packs that are currently in the shop that are going to be on the wheel i'm not going to go in and buy one of each pack to make sure i always have one so that it's always on the wheel because at the end of the day i am still on a second account and i'm doing it no money spent so i kind of have to be conscious of how many stubs i spend and how many stubs i have and then the last thing that i just straight up forgot to mention was one final rule to clarify how things work and that's just that if a player is not added or is removed from the roster we would need to pull that card again for them to actually be put on the team so a for instance would be if there was somebody that i pulled from a pack that was like a bronze and then in the roster update let's say they go all the way up to a diamond but I didn't add them to the team. I can't just go back and say, oh, well, I pulled them once so I can add them. We have to actually pull them again. However, though, we will revisit this rule later down the line. Probably once we get into season two, I'm brainstorming some ideas for how to make the wild card situation work and bring back some like season one players once we're in season two. But that's still months away. So that's nothing we need to worry about yet. So finally, all that stuff out of the way, we can actually get into episode one of pack attack and the first thing i want to mention is that intro episode is at 41 likes right now so that is automatically giving us 4,100 stubs to go towards our packs after the game today so as with every episode make sure you hit that like button you can add 100 stubs all on your own just by hitting the like button and i know we've been sitting here staring at it but look at this how lucky did we get to have one of the cards that i actually pulled for this team get supercharged before game one we have the whole rest of this week that i'm going to be playing a game of pack attack every day through friday and we basically got a free 93 overall and the hope is that after today's episode a lot of different aspects of this team are going to look a lot different now i haven't created any jerseys for pack attack yet this year outside of changing it to our basic orange and white color scheme but what we do have is since they allowed you to bring over stadiums from last year We've got last year's Pack Attack Park ready to go right away. And here we go. Game one is set to get underway. What kind of a mismatch are we going to face? Yeah, he's got a full diamond team. Not an insanely good full diamond team, but we're definitely overmatched. My biggest concern is our pitching. We have a 70 overall with no special pitches really going out on the mound today. Not much of a bullpen to back him up. All right, so here we go. We're on the road. We're leading it off right away. Geraldo Perdomo's taking the first at bat of pack attack on MLB The Show 24. And I can't see the ball. Oh, no. I could not see the ball where he released it with the sun behind yeah this is this is going to be rough for the first inning or so i can't I, I literally can't see it that is such a hittable pitch and i just i yeah and i'm <laughs> i'm not even close to the circle change because i can't pick up that it's any slower out of his hand okay well i took strike three there but the shadows are already changing a little bit that time i couldn't i could see the ball right out of his hand and then i couldn't see it as it was traveling in 
Oh, and then that was an attempted check swing. It's going to get caught. We're going down one, two, three, looking horrible in our first inning. All right, Jordan Wicks, you are going to need to pitch the game of your life right now. Okay, no, that's a really good sign. He is way out in front and just chasing that curveball in the dirt. That might mean this dude doesn't have much at the plate. That's very good. And there's another punch out. All right, we're already racking up the stubs on the mound. And he popped that one up. All right. We're not going to strike out the side, but a quick one, two, three inning. Now let's hope that the shadow is behind and we can actually do something at the plate now. Oh no, this actually looks like it's going to be worse. Th that initial ray of sunlight is passed, but now there's, there's the new one. It looks like once this passes, probably after this inning though, we should be fine. The, the rest of it looks in the dark. I I, it's not even worth saying anymore. You guys know. I just, uh, I am only waiting for the, the shadow to arrive behind the pitcher now. That I, I swear once we can actually see the ball coming in, I'm going to start hitting. Yeah, all right. I just, it is the curveball is giving me the most trouble right now because you, you see it out of his hand. You got to take away the 100 mile per hour fastball, but you can't tell the difference when you can't see the ball. There we go. Another punch out again. I don't know if it's working the same way that it's working against me. I don't know if this is just because they're also dealing with the sunlight. Because I was talking bad about him in that first inning. And then it kind of dawned on me when I got back up to the plate. That's like, oh yeah, that's how I'm looking too at the plate. There we go. Up and in that time gets the call. And Gallo makes the play. Same thing as the first inning. Two strikeouts and then a, a put out from Joey Gallo at third. All right, can we see yet? Is the shadow fully there? It is. It's time. Oh, and I'm still... <laughs> I'm still chasing the curveball low, but at least I timed it up that time. I just... I don't need to be swinging at that at that point. Oh my god, and then that one's gonna get caught too, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Maybe I just stink. I don't know why that's getting me. I really don't know why that's getting me right now. We're, we're getting no hit. We're getting a perfect game thrown against us one time through the order. I was also getting a little worried near the end there because I saw some sunlight coming through on like the pitcher as he was delivering and that just makes me worried that you know later in this game maybe sixth or seventh inning we're gonna have to deal with more sunlight. Uh oh. He finally timed up a pitch, and that's what's going to happen. If we keep the timing off, we're fine. But the second that anything is timed up with their players against my pitcher, it's not going to go well. Oh, yeah, I forgot the, forgot the Josh Gibson automatic perfect, perfect sound off the bat. That scared me at first. Oh my gosh, where is this coming from? Where is this all of a sudden coming from here? You had the homer, the Gibson swing was timed up, and now an actual perfect. Taken off for third. They might actually get in. They are. And, okay, no, we're good. That, that curveball hung more than it needed to, but Gallo's there. We give up the run. We're playing from behind now. But that's not, that's not new. This is pack attack. We play from behind plenty. There we go, and it is going to get through. Our first hit of pack attack comes a full time through the order, but it's Geraldo Perdomo leading it off in the fourth. Oh, God, I thought that was a slider, and I thought I was going to be able to hold up on it and take a walk. But no, I should have swung. I would have destroyed that. I was all over it. I'll just destroy that one. Supercharged Spencer Steer. Perfect, perfect on the cutter right down the middle, and we're taking the lead. The first home run of pack attack in MLB 24. Who else would it be but our supercharged guy? Don't you dare leave. Okay, no, we're just changing pitchers. We're going to a different starter. Oh, and Gallo. Oh my god. I feel like that didn't go as far as I thought it was going to go off the bat. Still 436. All three of our hits have been on perfect swings. It's almost like when I can actually see the ball, I can actually hit the ball. And I can still ground out, I guess. But I'll take it. 90. 90. Where did 90 even come from there? I was trying to say three. Three runs put up here in the fourth inning and we have the lead. All right, now we got Wicks a little bit of breathing room here to actually see 
if he's losing it, which he might be, but we're still getting outs. Yeah, and that's gonna be a hit. We don't need that. We don't need that at all when we're mismatched like this. I don't know, I'm thinking one more base runner and we call it a day for Wicks. The timing is just getting better and better. Yeah, and then that, uh, yeah. Yep, Wicks is done. I'm gonna go to one of my favorite pitchers of all time on MLB The Show. This guy right here, Adam Simber. Legitimately one of my favorite arms to use, and he's usually a common. Sometimes he's gotten up to a bronze. And he's immediately gonna come in and roll a double play. Oh, yeah. One pitch, two outs. Adam Simber is in midseason form. And man, I still keep swinging at pitches I don't need to be swinging at, but even that one, it was still in the zone. I could have made a better swing on it. All things considered, that's actually a pretty decent swing. It just came off the bat with nothing. Probably didn't need to swing at that one either, and it's also going to be an out, and it was also a really nice swing. And I'm late on that fastball up after curveball after curveball after curveball. Of course, I'm going to be late. If that inning proved anything, though, it's that we actually need a perfect swing to get a hit today. And another ground ball. I did not like how bad I messed up the uh, pinpoint there, but we're still ahead. Two pitches, three outs. Oh, and we, we got a swing and a miss, so it's going to ruin that. There we go, though. We're, we stay even. Four pitches, four outs. And I'll take the strikeout if that means we're not going to be even anymore with the outs and pitches. I'll take a strikeout. Oh, there it is. Castellanos to deep left field. Check on your loved ones because he just went deep. It was another perfect swing. It has to be, but that's our fourth hit and our fourth run of the game. Okay, and we're going to another new arm, another starter. Another perfect, so that's got to be another hit, right? Spencer Steer, supercharged. It's not going to go, but it one-hops the wall for a double. I'll take that. Another perfect. Oh, and it's not a hit this time. So sometimes we can't even get a hit when we're perfect. And that's not a perfect, so it's not going to be a hit. But we do add on one more on the Castellanos home run. And dude, how long is Adam Simber going to be able to stay into this game? He's either gotten a pitch on like the first at bat of every at bat. Wait, what What did I just say? I definitely just messed up what I just said. I think what I meant to say was he's either gotten an out on the first pitch of every at bat, which, you know, exhibit A, or he's struck out the batter on three pitches. There's no in between right now. Oh, okay. No three pitch strike out there. He just had to foul it off. And now we're down into the yellow energy. And we can't finish it off with another strikeout. That's probably going to be it for Simber. We don't want to risk anything, but we have. We're in a good spot, is what I'm trying to say. Three innings to go, three run lead. Just got to close it out. I want to see some of these dudes, though, in the bottom of the order get something going. I want to see Jordan Lawler pick up a hit. Okay. Or. Or we pop it up with them because I can't bring the PCI up to the fastball. And is that a hit on not a perfect swing? No way. And not just a hit, but an extra base hit. I'm going three. I don't even care. He tried to throw it all the way to third, so we'll get in there easy. One out triple for Alex Call. Oh my god, is that another one? Another non-perfect swing to the other gap. Back-to-back -back base hits out of the seven and eight hitter. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing taking strike three there? Perdomo, no, I was I was late on the changeup. All right. At least we tack on one more. Make this lead a little bit safer. Going to go to Michael Lorenzen here for the seventh inning. And you know what? I didn't even realize it with him being a relief pitcher, but I just checked and he has 81 stamina. So maybe I just try and finish this thing with him. And there we go. There's the first of the nine remaining outs. And all right, I I left it hanging, but he kept it on the ground. Come on, call. Come on, call. Let's get there. Oh, he let it drop in. 
Oh, come on. We can't let another one drop in. Steer, are you there? Steer's there. All right. He's going to his first non-starter out of the bullpen. We got Billy Wagner to face. I just wonder, what do people do when they go to multiple starters out of the bullpen? Because, like, I know how energy works. And those other two starters are going to be wrecked when it comes to their energy for the next game. We don't care about that anymore because Castellanos going deep to left field again. That went even deeper. Oh my God. That made it over that tunnel there. 453 for Castellanos. Second of the game, the world must be ending. He's replaying it. That's not even me. And spent. Oh, God. I thought that was going to be his third hit of the game. And Abreu, man, I can't get a hit with Abreu in this game. I've gotten a perfect swing with him, but he's 0 for 4. Another perfect and another homer for Gallo. Lefty, lefty this time. Two home runs apiece for Gallo, two apiece for Castellanos. We're putting up seven here in the eighth inning. We're going to have a lot of stubs and a lot of packs to open right away after one game. And Lawler, nope, that's not going to get through. We can't get a hit with him either. Oh, all right. Was not expecting him to come out of the gates with a perfect swing up to the opposite field. You know, I keep referring to my opponent as him, just instinctively. But, but the name up there in the top left kind of implies that I'm not playing a him. So I, I maybe got to gotta change it up here. And we'll, we'll get them to pop out and, well, take the easy double play. And that one's right to Perdomo. Makeshift one, two, three inning there. We've just got one to go. Alex Call, nope, we got a little out in front of that one. Oh man, I keep swinging at the first pitch and not making good swings at the first pitch. Oh, and now we're gonna see a new arm after Wagner had a really good start to the inning. And I'm still going to make a weak swing and pop it up. So we finish one hit shy of double digit hits today. But a 7-1 lead heading into the bottom of the ninth. I feel pretty good. We're going to stick with Lorenzen to hopefully bring this one to a close. Or we'll give up a base hit immediately. Sure. Yeah, and we can't as pointless to even throw it there. See, I wish there was an option. Maybe there is. Maybe if I adjusted the defense, that would have... Uh, held them where they're at and not allowed the free steal and that one's really <laughs> see this just cost us stubs this was the point that i was getting at with not allowing the free steal because for pack attack we're playing for every single stub between the two hits now and the run that basically costs us 900 stubs and this inning's not even over yet more stubs wasted but that time that was that was on me that was just a bad pitch. Dude, if another one of these drops in. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. Challenge fastball in on the hands gets the pop-up. Last inning did not need to be that frustrating, but we're all good. We get the win. 7-3 to three to kick off pack attack this year. And now it's about how many stubs we made and how many packs we get to open. So we get up to a 118 rating there after just one game. So that's, I mean, that's 118 extra stubs, I guess. All right, we also get some rewards for this season we get a spring training reward i guess that's the only one and we made a little bit of progress in the ranked program right away so we get to add this to whatever we open today a pack and 1500 extra stubs to go straight to the bank and all right tallying up our stub count for game one from hitting alone we make 13,800 stubs pitching adds on another 4,300 the bonus category gives us another 5,700 118. We're now on a one game winning streak, but we have no parallels yet. So that means our multiplier is just times 1.005 for game one, which puts our total stub count at 23,000. 937 stubs i'm gonna need to put a lot more work into earning stubs on this account if this is how we're gonna play wow and with those stubs what i went with was a 10 pack bundle with one extra show pack on top of it and then one headliner pack seven and as i'm sitting here it's just dawned on me i've forgotten the flow of things from last year typically i open anything i earned from ranked before i tally up the stubs i don't all open it at once but we do have that one extra pack and the ranked 
spring training reward to open here. So we're already on it. Let's just start with this guy, see what silver we get, and it's going to be Yuki Matsui. So that's going to be another silver to add to that bullpen. It's a lefty. And then let's get these 12 packs going. We should be seeing a lot of upgrades to our team here because we're opening more packs than we initially opened to upgrade the team in the first place. So typically what I do is after each pack opening after each episode i go through i determine who i add to the team and then everybody that i'm not adding is getting sold for the bank which so far i'm not gonna lie we're not seeing too many good pulls so a lot of these guys are just going right to our bank stubs but that's fine the quicker we can build up stubs in our bank the quicker we can start earning some of the better rewards start earning some pack wheel spins or just straight up buy some of the better packs off the shop whichever one makes the most sense at the time but man we are halfway through and i haven't pulled anything above a bronze yet come on all right what is this five to go here more bronzes i guess at least at least we've gotten a couple more starting pitchers so we don't have to dip down to like a 66 overall which would have been our next best starter after wicks Look at this. Look at how bad this is. This is a silver equipment, three common free agents, and then a free agent 65. That is as bad as a pack can get. There we go. All right. Some gold unlockables. That helps the stub bank. And we get a gold player. All right. Enough complaining and you get what you want. Our first gold player of pack attack this year is going to be Isak Paredes. Might need to check the pronunciation on that one, but I gave it my best. We also got another silver out of that one, Tommy Pham. Two more show packs to go here and we get more bronzes last one to go last chance at an upgrade out of a show pack and nope we're right back to some really bad packs but at least we have two more guaranteed silvers that we're going to see added to the squad the first one out of the silver topper from the 10 pack bundle it is just a silver but it's a starter and then finally it's the big one 7500 stubs spent on one headliner we had enough stubs i couldn't pass up on it even though you Usually at the beginning of pack attack each year, I feel like it's smarter to load up on show packs, but I couldn't not do it. We've got 93 overall Matt Shaw as the featured player, the headliner. So let's see what kind of luck we have here. First headliner pack opening of pack attack and we... <laughs> Whew, we're gonna be seeing that plenty no luck it's a silver it's a 76 it's este yuri ruiz but that is going to be where episode one comes to an end it was a great start but there is a lot more to go a whole lot more upgrades a whole lot more games a whole lot of world series pushing yet to come but for now once again make sure you've left your like on this episode to add 100 stubs towards the next one go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy what you saw today but thank you guys for watching thanks for coming back for another year of pack attack and i will see you next time